Welcome to Blind Ambition. I'm your host, Aaron Golub, and today I'm joined by Ron Williams. Ron, thank you so much for being here. Oh, man, thank you so much for having me, man. I'm happy to be with you. Same. It took us a while to get this scheduled, but I'm really looking forward to it, really looking forward to getting to know you, sharing your story, seeing the message and, and the lessons that you can share with my listeners and, and ready to get this going. So if you don't mind, you want to give a quick background on yourself and, and just who you are? Well, I, uh, uh, my name is Ron Williams. I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, I've, I've had a, my share of uh, tragic events growing up and things that I had to overcome and uh, 21 time world champion. I was illiterate until I was 28, learned to read. And after, after that, I became a college professor college professor and also I've written several books created several inventions and uh, yeah uh, but all of this happened um, because of my relationship with God it just took my whole life in a different direction and there's so much I want to dig into there and and we'll get to the part of you being a 21 time world champion but I'm gonna go back to your childhood and and so that you said that you were illiterate till you were 28 you know, what was yeah. it growing up as a child? What was it growing up being illiterate? And, and what caused you eventually to learn to read, learn to overcome that? Well, growing up as a child, I was um, my father's only child. And I, my mother had four children. And I was the only one that was given away. I was just given away, not uh, adopted or not given to a foster home, but I was dropped off at a babysitter's house and they just never came came back to get me, man. And I was on the streets by the time I was 15. Um, When I went to school, I was worried, you know, concerned about my next meal. I wasn't concerned about taking tests. I wasn't concerned about any of that. And I was so filled with hatred. And I can remember being hungry a lot of times, man. And uh, so by the time I was 15, I was on the streets. It wasn't that I didn't believe in God, Aaron, but I believed that there was a God and that he hated me because if he was really God, then couldn't he have prevented some of the things that I was going through? I mean, I was molested as a child for a lot of years. I was beaten as a child. I was lied to constantly. And Santa Claus, he never came by. Even Santa Claus didn't like me, man. (laughs) So it was, it was really me against the world and me against God. So that was my mentality, how I grew up. If I couldn't get it myself, then I couldn't, it, it couldn't be gotten. So I had to depend on me. And uh, that became very shallow after a while. I was suicidal by, I was, by the time I was 13, man. Wow. wow. You know, growing up with all that in your life, what was it that caused you to keep going? You know, obviously you had this incredible strength inside of you. And through all of those challenges, through everything going on in your life, you know, what was that, that feeling like? And, and what caused you to say, I need to keep going. I need to keep pushing. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. And that's what, I mean, you know what, man, that is a really, really good question. I can remember one of the things that kept me going. Um, and I'm going to tell you a second thing, but one of the things that kept me going was uh, I had a friend that fell out of an apple tree. And when he fell out of the apple tree, he fell on a rake, one of those hard steel rakes, and it went through his head and he lived. And I thought, if I tried to commit suicide, I would probably mess that up too. And I would be paralyzed or something and uh, it wouldn't be effective. And I, and, and I wanted to end it. I wanted to do it right. That was one thing. And the second thing was I had a dream. I had an ongoing dream of doing something great. I had an ongoing dream of being a hero. I didn't know how this thing was going to happen, but I believed that I would, was capable of not only changing my life, but changing millions of lives around me. And I can remember this dream from the time of being eight or nine years old uh, up until the time I was uh, 28 when my life turned around. But that dream kept me alive, man. And uh, one thing I say about dreams is dreams are really important. Don't stop dreaming. But uh, dreams may keep you alive, but they'll never get you 
the results that you want because dreams are for sleepers. And when you wake up, you need to roll your sleeves up and get to work. So I stop dreaming and I start doing. That's, that's so powerful. That's, that's incredible. What, what was that like? being 27, 28 years old and saying, you know, I'm illiterate. I need to change this. I need to figure out how to, how to read and, and how to move on. I mean, you've done some incredible things since then. And it's, it's, yeah. it's a lot of things that if you were still illiterate, you probably wouldn't have been able to, to have happened. So what, what was that switch that said, I need to change this? Well, one is I never thought I was going to be capable of reading. You know, once you get out of high school, you know, they say you can't teach an old dog a new trick. So I had to come to the grips that I must not be a dog. <laughs> and so when I started developing a relationship with God, I knew the only way that I could truly get to know him was reading the Bible. I had to be able to understand how to read the Bible. So I've always said for all these years that God taught me how to read by reading the Bible. I mean, I would sound out words and I would go to the dictionary and try to figure things out. I mean, I had real problems, man. I mean, um, when I would read, it would sound like this. The, 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 may. I mean, I would, I would go through a whole sentence like that. And then I'd have to start over and read the whole sentence over and over and over and over again. And I had problems with words like you can spell the word since four or five different ways. And to know which one belonged where was a whole another uh, uh, can of worms that I had to open, like the word there. Uh, it could be a place or it could be a person. Each one of them was spelled different but it sounds the same, there, there. Um, you know, when you're talking about a place, it's, it's with an E. When you talk about a person, it's with an I. So I had to learn all of the, the, uh, the phonetical differences and how to put commas and periods. At 28 years old, that is a tough thing, man. Yeah, but I, but I learned it and I began to write books myself. I became a college professor when I was 40. So, uh, it, it's been an amazing journey, and 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 I really think God looks down, and He's got a sense of humor, man. Because it's kind of funny. Uh, this illiterate child—if you'd have looked at me when I was a little kid, you wouldn't have been able to tell, you know, any difference in me than the next child. They said to me when I was 14 years old, they said, "You were born to fail. You'll be dead or in jail before you're 18." And you know, those words were powerful because I believed them. Yeah. Uh, then I did, and I was geared and taught how to lose. I didn't know yeah. winning was a possibility. Yeah. Yeah. And once wow. I started winning, and I got addicted to it. I was like, hey, I can win? I'm going to do a lot of this stuff. <laughs> it's, it's one of those things where once you learn to win, once you experience that feeling, that excitement, it's, it is addicting. And it's, it's the best feeling in my opinion, that you can ever feel is winning and seeing your success and all your hard work come, come to be success. And, and, and so what was that journey like for you? What, what got you in to the sport that you're in? What got you to become a world champion and, and to do it you know, time and time again? Well, what happened was I was so insecure and what I did, I was, I was a fighter. I mean, I would get angry and I, at a drop of a dime, I would fight. I would go places looking for a fight. I would, you know, when I was a kid, I would, uh, when I was in the military, I went to the bars and I wanted somebody to step on my blue suede shoes, like Elvis said, <laughs> don't step on my blue suede shoes. I wanted somebody to step on my blue suede shoes so I could get rid of some of this anger that was built up inside of me and explode because it seemed like, uh, if I got in a fight, I felt better, better temporarily. Yeah. And so I played four sports on an international level. And one of them was platform diving. And the reason why I love platform diving so much is I was suspended for a few seconds between uh, heaven and earth. And I felt free in those few seconds. Yeah. I felt that I wasn't attached to anything. Nothing was attached to me. And I could just float and spin and turn in the middle of nothing. And then I would hit the water. 
and I do it again and again and again. I got really, really good at it. Um, and that's the reason why I, I, um, I was on the diving team, but I dove for the military. You know, I was on the military diving team, military track team, military boxing team. And you can guess why I was on the boxing team. I just wanted to hit <laughs> something. I wanted to hit something because I was so angry. Um, yeah, but then uh, I became really good at it. Boxing on the military uh, boxing team taught me something that was very valuable that lasted me throughout my life. And that was, uh, I remember the Georgia State Golden Gloves. I won the Georgia State Golden Gloves. And I'm just a short guy. So the people that I fought were a lot taller than me. Um, and what I learned was I was pretty good at it. And I said, I'll never, I'll never fight for free again. I'll never fight for free again. I'll never do a bar fight. If you want to see me fight, you've got to pay to see me fight. So that thought process took me out of bar fighting and street fighting uh, because my mentality was different. Yeah. I couldn't express my anger that way anymore. Man, wow. That's incredible. That's, that's so powerful. And then how did you, I mean, just, just being a one-time world champion is, is incredibly tough and, and such an amazing achievement, but how did you become you know, a 21 time world champion? What, what led to that? What kept you going? What made you want to keep doing it? You know, that's, that's unheard of. Well, one thing that, uh, that really helped in that is I learned, and I'd always had this throughout my whole life, you know, um, pain is very, very valuable. And pain is something that we run from, we run from, or we learn to embrace. And I looked at pain as a friend and not an enemy. Uh, when pain came, most people run from it. But when pain came, I embraced it. It's like, oh, here we go again, my friend. And when I ran track, I won, I won races that I was never supposed to run. Uh, the 400 meter is a long race. And most people, what they do, they do the best they can for 300 meters, and then they finish up the best they can. But me, I would keep up with the rest of the crowd for 300 meters, and then I would turn it on because that's where the pain starts. That's where the monkey gets on your back. That's where uh, the real men show up, you know, uh, and, 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 and I knew that if I could, if I could uh, manage the pain better than the next guy, that I could beat it. And I learned how to manage pain well, you know, because all of the emotional and mental pain I had, I had no jurisdiction over. But I knew within 45 to 60 seconds, I could take this pain and I could turn it on and off whenever I wanted to. But I had to learn how to manage it for the time it took me to cross the finish line. So I transferred that not only in track, but in my training in the gym. When I'm doing a leg extension and those legs start to burn, people say, ah, oh, oh, it's time to stop. But me, all. Oh. This is where the game start. And I push through that pain, man. <laughs> that's that's how you see growth. You know, if you right. if you do eight reps and it's starting to burn and you do four more, those last four is when you grow, not that first eight. Come on, me and you, we speak the same language, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's awesome. You know, I want to go back to you know, you said you were as a child, you were 15 years old and you were living on the streets. What was that like? You know, what was that experience like being so young and, and being on the streets? It was, it was lonely, man. It, it, it was a lonely place. And sometimes I would stay all night at a friend's house. I would sleep under their bed or I would sleep in a garage, you know. Uh, and and, and um, if, if I got caught, you know, I had girlfriends. Sometimes I would sleep over their house and uh, jumped out, I jumped out of a lot of windows, man. Um, it was a really lonely place to be in the world, just being alone and by yourself and um, depressing, suicidal. I mean, all of those thoughts went through my mind, but for some reason, uh, I didn't do it. And I made it to where I am today. And I'm just very, very grateful to God that I'm here, man. Yeah, yeah. wow, that's a powerful story. And really incredible and inspiration. You know, what are you doing nowadays you know you said you've I mean, you've been an athlete your entire life you became a professor you've written books you know what's what's right now 
What, what's going on? Oh, right now, man, my life is so exciting. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm so full of life that it is, it's crazy. Um, I do life coaching. I do, I invent exercise equipment. I write books. I'm a pastor of a church. I'm putting together a program right now, like something, I mean, something I've never done before. Uh, I'm 59 years old and in my best condition, I think I was 47, 48 when I, when I retired, but uh, from bodybuilding, it was the last Mr. Universe that I won. Um, it was around that age. And when I was, in, when I was about 40 um, is when I really started to become the best that I could be. And yeah. in February, I'll be 60. February, I'll be 60. But I started a program that I'm taking people through this program, and I'm going through the program with them. And we're training on faith, family, fitness, and finances. And the fitness portion of it is only the outward, the outward appearance of what's taking place inside. So as my body is shaping and toning and sculpting, so is my faith, so is my family relationships, so are my finances. But the, but the representation is my physical body. And I'm about 10%, uh, maybe 15, I'll say 15% away from being in the best shape of my life and I'll be 60 years old, man. Wow, wow. do you think you'd ever compete again? You know what, it's, it's, it's hard, it's hard not to, but my, I think once a competitor, always a competitor. And right now my passion is to transfer my life experiences to other people. Those people that are stuck and can't move forward. That's my passion, man, to, these, there's so many people out there that are hurting, man. So many people. And I get more uh, self-gratification in seeing them free. Yeah. That's what I've committed my life to. That's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. What, what lessons, what advice would you give to someone who's you know, struggling through some pain, who doesn't know if they can keep going and, and, and who wants to achieve a goal? What, what advice would you give? One thing is all about perspective and how you view it. You know, um, one person will look at somebody else's pain and think it's a blessing. You know, um, there's a there's a there's a book called The Hiding Place, and what was really incredible about this book is uh, the these ladies were in this in this camp, uh, and it has everything to do with um, the Holocaust. They were in this camp, and this one portion of the camp, the soldiers didn't go in and beat the women, and so they were praying. And the perspective was, man, we've got these fleas. And this lady prayed and said, God, thank you for the fleas. And the other girl said, why would you thank God for the fleas? Well, they found out several months later that the only reason the guards didn't go in to their cabin is because of the fleas. <laughs> so they have a whole different perspective now. Thank you for the fleas, because yeah. whenever they come into the um, to that cabin, they beat you, but they didn't come in here because of the fleas. So thank God for the fleas. So it really is about perspective and reassociation. And another reassociation is if I'm in my home and I hear this noise in the basement, the first thing I think, I grab my bat, I go downstairs and see who broke in my home. Well, I need to reassociate. And the way I do that is I go in the basement, I look around and see who's down there. I see there's a cat. And then there's a vase on the floor. Well, there's nobody in my basement. My cat knocked over the vase. That's where the noise came from. So it's a reassociation. I go back in the past, find out those things that hurt me, and develop a type of reassociation. What is the blessing in this? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's wow. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. I mean, I'm sure that my audience, my listeners are going to get so many amazing things from your story, from your journey, where can people find you? Where can people learn more? Where can people get in touch with you? Well, one is um, uh, if, if you Google Ron Williams, um, bodybuilder, I'll come up uh, in a lot of places. We're on, um, um, we sell our equipment on Amazon. You can reach me at um, uh, faith and fat loss at yahoo.com. If you have any questions, you know, anybody that comes from this podcast, if they have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those questions. Um, 
Uh, if you just Google me, you'll find me really, really easily, really easily. Yeah. But um, ronwilliamsfitness.com, same thing. Uh, ronwilliamsministries.com, that's another place to find me. Wow, awesome. Well, look, thank you so much for coming on. I'll, I'll stop the recording in a minute. We can chat, but thank you again. I'm sure my, my listeners have really appreciated it, and I appreciate your time. Okay, my friend. God bless you, man. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, please like and subscribe and get ready to watch the next video coming soon.